continuing um, with my report is Ms. Deborah Trent, Budget Finance. Good evening. Um, I just want to say, first off, congratulations again to Dr. Wanda Cook Robinson. And I want to say, since I've been here, I've sat um, multiple years in school finance. And she has been wonderful to work for. She's truly a leader that makes you want to follow. So it, it, it's been great. So congratulations. Um, I'd also at this time like to have uh, Diane Wells and Nate Ferrer from the auditing firm of Plant Ranch come up and give us our audit report. First of all, I want to thank the board for the opportunity to do this tonight because the last step in the audit process is our report back to the, the board that hire, hires us. We have four items that were in your board packet. One is the general purpose financial statement, the federal single audit, our annual letter to the board, and then a presentation which is up here of some of the key financial information for the year. I'm not going to go over all the details uh, in all those documents or we could be here for several weeks, but I just intend to hit some of the key items tonight. First of all, a few comments on the audit process. So we spent over 500 hours testing controls, testing balances, reviewing supporting documentation, confirming with outside parties, discussions with district personnel, and testing for compliance with certain laws and regulations. Virtually all of our work is done on site at the district offices and really starts prior to the end of your fiscal year, which is in the area. In order for us to issue an opinion, we have some very strict standards and policies that we must adhere to. In fact, Plant Ranch participates in an extensive peer review process that is disclosed to the public in the demand of public record. So the objective on a financial statement audit is for the independent auditors to issue our opinion on the amount and the disclosures in the financial statement. Overall, we found the, the books and records to be in very good shape. Um, I'm happy to report that based on all our tests and procedures, we have rendered an unqualified or a clean opinion on the district's financial statement. This is the highest level of assurance that we, we as auditors can provide on a set of financial statements. In addition, these financial statements are submitted for evaluation by the Association of Business School Officials. For over 20 years, and Debbie probably has the exact number, uh, Southfield Public Schools has been awarded their Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting by this association. In order for, the, for you to achieve the award, your report must meet an even stricter um, extensive level of standards. And this is a significant achievement and we commend the district for its efforts in reporting accurately and meaningful financial information. I know Southfield is the longest standing recipient of this, of this award in the state of Michigan. Oh, wow. wow. In addition to the, the main audit report, um, there's two other documents. There's, uh, as I mentioned, a, a document on the, the federal programs and their compliance with laws and regulations, and also our annual letter to the board, which contains uh, some additional information just on and an update on, on school finance. And I encourage you to read uh, through those about when you have time. There's not any significant items in there that I feel I need to bring to your attention today. Before we move on to some key numbers on this year's presentation, I wanted to give you a, just a matter of perspective, and this, this was not planned, um, but I look back to the district in 2004. In 2004, the district's general fund revenue was $114 Last year, it was $114 million, so a decline of over $30 million in roughly eight years, or 20%. And this includes a decline in state revenue of approximately 24%. So not only did revenue decline, some of your costs were escalating at a rate much faster than the rate of inflation, like, like health care premiums and insurance costs. In fact, the retirement rate in 2004 was less than 13%. Next year, it's over 25%. So schools are essentially on a fixed budget. And this decline in rent will require you, has required you to make some very difficult decisions. In prior years, I've urged you to plan and react accordingly, and I believe you have done that, and I commend you for that. I'd like to think that the rough roads in 
in the financial areas behind us, but I still caution you that there will be continued tough decisions to make. You know, as a point of reference, I found it interesting that uh, while revenue decreased 20%, instruction expenditures or direct classroom expenditures only decreased 13% over an eight-year period. So that tells me that you've been able to minimize the, the effects on the, the cuts on the direct classroom expenditures. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Nate, who's going to talk about some um, of the key items in this year's uh, financial statement. Thank you. another 
at 7.5 million or 8 percent, and an outgoing transfer to another at 4 percent or 4.4 million dollars. This next slide shows a little bit of analysis in regards to fund balance. So the, the common question we get is how much fund balance is enough, and there's never an easy answer to that question. Um, a common way to compare fund balance is to view it as a percentage of expenditures each year. So if you take the current year fund balance of $22.5 million divided by the, the current operating expenditures of $89 million, you arrive at 25.3%. The last published state average as of June 30, 2011 was 11.1%. So we are higher than that as of June 30, 2012. But I think it's a testament to making some of the hard decisions you've made over the years. But as you can see also, in 2013, we're projecting a, a large deficit of $12 million, so that 25.3% becomes 10.2% in one year. And then again, it would be below the state average. Another way to view fund balance is to view it as the number of days that you could survive without future funding. So as of June 30, 2012, based on a 180-day school year, you'd have enough money to last 45 days of school. Now again, if 2013 happens as we project, that 45 days goes down to 18 days very quickly. <coughs> My last slide shows a common trend of Michigan and uh, a problem face that many schools are facing, and that's declining enrollment. From 2008 to, through 2012, Southfield schools have lost over 1,500 students. Now, to quantify that impact, that's essentially $16.7 million of lost revenue if we had had the same number of students in 2008 this year. Again, from the revenue slide, <coughs> it says, you know, your revenue, your biggest source of revenue each year is just based on that, that formula. So as your students are decreasing, that's having a very big impact on your revenue each year. And with costs that are continue, continue, continuing to go up, such as health care and retirement, the school district each year is having to do more with less. Any questions for the board? I'll let the financial mind uh, take over this morning. Well, we've actually had a chance to, to speak directly with uh, Plant Moran uh, on a couple of different occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we understand where we are as it relates to uh, funding. Uh, we certainly want to, as a board, um, I would personally like to be in Washington right after inauguration to uh, work all of the newly elected <coughs> officials uh, to ring the bell. I mean, it, it, we've been in financial crises since I've been on board. And I know that you all have been struggling with finances as well. And I know Mr. Obama has pledged that he was going to fund education and training. That was one of his uh, campaign cries. I heard it. Now, the rest of the community heard it. And I certainly plan to be in Washington in January to extend my hand of congratulations, but also ask for some additional funding for, for education in general, but more specifically to fund us here in Southfield as well. So thank you, Maria. Thanks for all that you do. Uh, I know it was uh, a rather interesting uh, year for us. And, uh, thank you for your opinion. Now, if you could just, you know, explain to the community what a clean audit, you know, actually detail. I mean, that, that's reporting back, you know, uh, how, as, as fiduciaries, as you know, trustees of the public, you know, funds, you know, you talk about how this board handles, you know, uh, their funds, uh, their affairs, as opposed to maybe some of the surrounding districts or some of the others. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, we spend over 500 hours testing all your, your balances, testing with, um, your finance office um, prepares. You know, in some cases, to get to a clean opinion, we have to have a bunch of adjustments that we recommend in order to come to that. And in this case, we did not. So the books were in order when we got here. Um, reconciliations were done timely. And so, um, to get to that, to that clean opinion, there was, you know, we had a bunch of adjustments that we 
red, the red bar is the statewide average, excluding Detroit, obviously. So 2012 and 2013, does this indicate that we're doing better than the rest we don't, of the state? We don't know yet. Actually, all the all the audit reports are, are due to the state on Thursday, and then that number will be accumulated. Okay. So we just don't have that information yet. I suspect, from what I see at other districts, because we do 100 over 100 districts, that that statewide average, I suspect, is going to go down from where it was a year ago. Could you go back to the pie chart one more time so that you can see the the where, the, where the revenue sources are coming from? So, you know, 76% of it is your state foundation allowance, which is strictly your number of students times the state foundation allowance. Then you've got some categorical and local revenue, and then your federal revenue, and the same two others. Your federal revenue is about um, $5 million. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Trump and Ms. Barker for um, all they do and the cooperation we get uh, when we perform the audit. I just had to mention the, the morning I was at, I was one of the mentors in at Women of Tomorrow at, um, at, 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 at Trash. And um, at the end, we, actually today's thing was about filling out a job application. So we gave them one job application and showing the sample. We asked them too, we, we wanted to go on a field trip. And where do they want to go? And a lot of them wanted to nurses, so they wanted to see the surgery. Someone wants to see a movie being made. Someone wanted to see a
Uh, we've had numerous staff reductions, pay and benefit concessions from every group. Uh, we have health insurance caps. We are all paying 20% of our health insurance premiums. And if you've um, been around schools, you know that that's unheard of in the school sector. It was just wasn't something that we did. Um, we made changes to transportation. Even after we privatized, we went back and looked at it again, and we went to main road pickups to pick up some more savings. We've decreased our legal expenses by hundreds of thousands by bringing that in-house. Uh, we've decreased capital outlay expenses. That piece we're going to talk about a little bit more going on here, but that's something we had to do to get to where we're at today. Um, we've created operational efficiencies. Every office, every group has looked at things they can do in their own shop to see how can we do things better to save money. We put all of our paychecks online so we're not printing them. And just the savings for little things like that really add up. You're not paying for the ink, you're not paying the postage, you're not paying for the paper. So that's just one example, and that's been going on all over the district. Now, uh, we've implemented some energy savings. We have sensors on our lights so they go off when we're gone. We went through and we retrofitted some of our light bulbs for more energy efficiency. And again, there's a lot more things, but I'm just giving you a couple of highlights of things that we've done. Um, we reduced our workman's comp, our employment, and we've also, um, and I'm blind and I should have my glasses on, so I'm trying to read my own thing here. Um, we worked with all of our contractors. We went back to every one of them and we said, you've got to help us. You're part of the community. You have contracts with us. We don't want to change our services. We need the services, but we really need you just to give us some concessions on your contract prices, and they did. So that's what I, when I say everybody as a team, I do mean everybody. We pull together. If you see the graph up there, that shows that when we started out here, our revenues were up over 100 40 million. And because of all the different things that have happened, the student loss, the state coming through, cutting us, our property values falling off, you can see that line. It's, just, it's almost straight down. That is the cliff that everyone's been talking about. But if you see the red line, that's our expenditures. That's something that we had to do. Your expenditures are a flat line that go straight across every year unless you make huge changes to them to bring them down. So we have been doing our very best to keep that in line so that we don't go in deficit. Um, this is a graph on our pupil FTEs. When I came here again, we were over 10,000 pupils. And now this year, we had projected that we were going to be down to just a little over 7,000. So you can see what that graph looks like. They're just falling right up. And the auditors explained that <coughs> the formula for our funding comes from mostly from how many pupils. The money follows the pupils. So, but the good news is, is that we had projected a loss of about 485 students this year. Every year we have a company go out and they look at all the economic indicators, the birth rates, everything, and they, they can give us an idea of how many pupils they think we're going to have year to year. It's been dropping off by four to 500 every year. This year, we only lost a little over 160. And what we did is we, we decided that we have a great story here to tell in Southfield. And we were the only ones that do that. You know, our schools are awesome. We sit in here every board meeting and we hear about all the great things that are going on. And people didn't know that, though. So, you know, the people were going to other school districts and we wanted to know what do we do. So we decided we need to get the word out. So we did a marketing campaign and we started to tell people, we have great teachers, we have rigorous curriculum, very high graduation rates. We're district accredited, not just school districts or each school but the whole district as a whole. We have dual enrollment, Europe, STEM, International Baccalaureate. We've had Gates Millennium Scholars. That's huge. The Michigan School Board Excellence in Education Award. The ASBO, that's the um, Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting. We've had that for actually 29 years. So um, we are the longest standing um, recipient in the state. So, and I could go on and on. I, I had a list of talking points like this, but I didn't want to go on and on too much with it. But we just have a great story. So what we're doing is we're getting that out. And it showed this year. 285 pupils stay here that we have thought <coughs> of our projections. And our projections have been pretty good every year. So that shows that what we're doing is making a difference. This is another thing that I thought was really illustrative of, of what's been happening here. Back in 2008, we had 1,300 employees. Now, some of that, the first big drop-off there is when we privatized. So that's going to be just the privatization itself. But if you look right after that, 923 in 2010, from there forward, that's just been us tightening our belts. Everybody here is doing more with less. 
everyone has learned to work more efficiently. You know, it, everybody has just kicked in. And what you don't see, see when you come in is you don't see a lot of people complaining or, you know, not wanting to do their job. They're coming in, they're happy, they're doing two and three jobs, and they're getting things done. This is a big one. We've kept their promise to the community. If you see, the graph on the left shows property values. The tax on the right shows the tax levy. We're a whole harmless district, so what that means is that a lot of our revenue comes from property, um, personal pro or local property taxes. Is what I want to say. So if you see where the bar goes up on the property values, that means that the levy that we were levying, which back in 2004 was 19.63 mills, which was rather high, as the property values went up, that started generating more and more money. So we started lowering the property tax levy on the residents so that you would get a little relief. Now you see the big dip on the right where it went down to 14? That was because the property values went so far up before 2010 that we had actually generated more than our per pupil. You can only um, generate as much as your pupil allowance from the state times your number of pupils. We had more than that, so we dropped it down in kind of a way to rebate the residents, give you back your money. But then when we brought it back up, even though the property values, you notice from there, it's just straight down. It wasn't coming back up. We didn't go back up to the 19. We only went up to 16.98, and we've held it there straight all the way through. We're actually, we have a voters allowed millage of 17.6345, and the board and the administration made a promise to the community that we would not raise it. So we have another three quarters of a mill that we could be levying, but we have not. We decided to live within our means tighten our belts and we have done that. Oh, the other thing is, is because we're whole harmless, we've been losing <coughs> approximately $5 million a year because our property values don't generate enough for us to get our per pupil, which comes out to about $700 per pupil that we are not bringing in. So that's just another piece of the puzzle that we have been fighting against. But even with all that, we're a success. This is our fund balance. We're at 22 million. <coughs> the message I want to get across is that that 22 million is not 22 million in cash that we can spend. That 22 million is reserved. Actually, it's not enough to get us out the next two years of budgeted deficits. But it's still, it's a great place. Remember when I started this out, I said we were supposed to be 130 million in deficit, and we're not. We're sitting at 22 million. That's going to take us into the future. We're going to keep doing what we do, and I do believe at this point that we will stay solvent. I haven't always thought that we could stay out of deficit, but I do believe that we can. Um, the projected fund, the deficit operating uh, deficit for next year is 12 million. That's part of what we've reserved from this fund balance, and then the year after that, it looks like probably 14 million. That could change depending on if we keep more pupils. You know, if things keep going the way they're supposed to, then we'll, you know things will change. That could get a little bit better. But still, we only have three million unassigned. And I said that I would get back to the capital projects because that's a big story here. Part of what we've done to stay out of deficit is we stopped all of our infrastructure spending and our technology spending because those are two huge areas in the school district that really eat up a lot of your money. We didn't have the money. We were just trying to stay above water and keep it away from the kids so that the curriculum and all the great things that they're doing there could keep going. So we have made all of our cuts away from that area, but it's, you know, it, you can only do that for so long. What I tried to show here is that we have 20 buildings in this district that we have a little over 2 million square foot of property. So if you think about that in relation to your own home and just the upkeep that it takes on your home, think about 2 million square foot. Roof, parking lots, boilers, HVAC systems, athletic fields, I put some of the estimated costs. Those things are failing here and there, and what we've done right now is that we're patching as we go. But we are going to get a facilities assessment, and we're going to have to start looking into the future. So we have to start making sure that we keep these buildings in the, you know, in the manner that they are now so that our children have a good place to go to. It's not just about the learning, they also have to have a good environment. Um, Technology is another area we kind of haven't put any money into lately. I uh, asked our IT department for just a quick inventory. We have over 5,000 computers. They're about $1,000 a piece. We have over 150 smart boards 
and they cost about $1,200, and we have 500 iPads. If you add that up right there, just those three things, and we have many, many other things. That's $5 million in technology right there. A normal replacement is three to five years. We haven't done that. We're not on a replacement schedule. We're replacing when they die right now. So these are just things I just want you to keep in your mind, because going forward, we have to be cautious. So, you know, what I did on this last slide, you can just see I just love to put pictures up here, too. <laughs> you get the little kids up there, it makes me remember why we're doing this. But it's about balance. That's how it scales in the middle. So we're going to go forward. We're going to try and balance this. We want to do the best we can for the kids, put as much money in curriculum. You heard from the auditors that we have actually increased our percentage of costs on curriculum. So that's a great thing. But we have to remember that that money that's showing in fund balance is not really money that we have to just spend. And as the CFO, I always try to make sure that everybody's really cautious because we do need that money going forward to make sure that our district stays solvent and that we keep the infrastructure up, too. So does anybody have any questions? One more thing I almost forgot. Sherry, can you stand up real quick? And I don't think Joanne came. Sherry does the lion's share of the work on the audit, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw 